But we begin this hour in Washington, where former President Donald Trump is scheduled to be arraigned this afternoon. He's accused, of course, of lying to try to overturn the 2020 election results, leading to the January 6th assault on the Capitol. Security tight at the D.C. courthouse and barricades are already up ahead of Trump's scheduled appearance this afternoon. And that's where we find our Robert Costa. Bob, good morning. Good morning. I am outside the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C., where former President Trump is expected to arrive here later this afternoon. There's a strong police presence. You see many U.S. Marshals right now walking around, keeping an eye on everything that's going on, bracing for possible protests. Former President Donald Trump spent time yesterday playing golf at his club in Bedminster, New Jersey, ahead of his arraignment today in federal court in Washington. An indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States. A federal grand jury handed up Trump's second federal indictment, and he was charged for his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The former president is expected to enter a not guilty plea and will learn whether he faces any travel restrictions. After today's hearing, the case will shift to U.S. District Court Judge Tanya Chutkin, a 2014 appointee of then-President Obama. In past hearings of January 6 defendants, she's called the attack horrifying and a violent attempt to overthrow the government. We won in a landslide. This was a landslide. Sources say Trump's lawyers plan to argue that Trump's false claims about the election were not criminal and that his efforts were driven by the advice of outside attorneys like Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani and John Eastman, among others. CBS News has learned that they are likely some of the six alleged co-conspirators cited in the indictment. I think Jack Smith built this indictment for speed. The, he could have charged the other six folks and made them part of the case. He didn't do that because it would slow things down. I had hoped it wouldn't come to this. On the campaign trail, former Vice President Mike Pence, who testified before the grand jury in this case, harshly criticized Trump's conduct. Sadly, the president was surrounded by a group of crackpot lawyers that kept telling him what his itching ears wanted to hear. Finally, there are being consequences held for the former president's actions. Former Capitol Police Officer Winston Pajan was punched in the face and pepper sprayed during the January 6 assault on the Capitol. What the president has said and done is wrong on so many levels. And now we've seen it clearly articulated in this indictment that what he did was illegal. Security has been tightened on Capitol Hill and at the D.C. federal courthouse, where Trump is set to arrive this afternoon with a heavy police and Secret Service escort. It comes after a bogus 911 call Wednesday about an active shooter prompted a brief security scare near the Capitol. Yeah, we're prepared for whatever might happen. Ahead of his arraignment, former President Trump is calling for this trial, this case, to be moved out of Washington and to West Virginia, a ruby red state where Trump believes he would get a more impartial hearing from a jury. Meanwhile, Trump does still face legal challenges in Georgia and a possible indictment. A charging decision there could come quite soon. Anne Marie. All right, Bob, thank you. So I want to bring in CBS News Chief National Affairs and Justice Correspondent Jeff Begays now. He's standing by outside of the courthouse in Washington. So, you know, set the scene for us outside of the courthouse. We heard a little bit about the extra security measures that are being put in place. I sort of feel like this is deja vu all over again. Here we go as things ramp up around this courthouse and really around this part of D.C. You have the Capitol building nearby, so many landmarks in this city, and of course, Law enforcement here is concerned about things getting out of hand. I mean, where I'm standing is within view of where the insurrection occurred. And so in some ways, it's sort of poetic that this case is starting here. And it starts today. Right now, you have law enforcement. You have barricades. But expect things to ramp up as we get closer to 4 p.m. and this arraignment. This is going to be unlike any arraignment we've ever seen. Of course, when you have a former president who is the defendant in a case like this and all the attention on this case, you're going to have out of the ordinary, let's put it that way, out of the ordinary security precautions. And that's what we will see today. No one wants to see a repeat of what happened on January 6th. You have a lot of coordination here between the Secret Service, between the local police department, as well as other federal agencies. 
You know, you're, it's really good for you to sort of point that out, that we've certainly seen Donald Trump being arraigned twice already, once in Florida, once in New York. But this is the first time that uh, this is, it is, the arraignment is happening so close to the scene of the crime, if you will. Um, can you give us a sense of how this arraignment may compare to the other two that we've seen? Well, there will, of course, be some similarities with any type of court case that you might see in this country, whether it's a, a state and local case or a federal case. But it, what's different here, of course, is that this is a former president, someone who could be, uh, 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 could be uh, in a situation where you know, security gets out of control in terms of the crowd control, and then police have to move in. So obviously with the attention on this case, law enforcement is gonna play, pay closer to attention. In terms of what's gonna happen uh, out here, typically the media, and there's a lot of media here already, uh, hmm. in fact, more than, than law enforcement at this point, but of course that will change. But when you have this amount of, of attention on a case, Typically, we'd want to see a, what we call in this business, a, a perp walk, but mm. you're not gonna see that in this case uh, because there are security ramifications uh, doing something like that. You're not gonna want to parade the former president in public. And so what we're hearing right now is that he will be taken down in his motorcade. It's, it's not gonna be a presidential level motorcade with dozens of vehicles, but it's gonna be pretty hefty. Uh, we don't expect him to, you know, to get out of the vehicle and wave before he goes into the courthouse. Now, what comes out, ha what happens after that, we'll have to see. It, it might be um, not as planned as what we expect going into the courthouse. Uh, so there are a lot of different security factors at play, if you will, and the situation is fluid. But to your question, it, there will be similarities with some of the other court appearance, but expect the unexpected. Uh, yeah, that, that's, I think that's a great rule of thumb. Uh, it's probably not going to help that this is all going down during rush hour at right around 4 o'clock. Um, and rush hour in D.C. is pretty bad as it is without something like this. Um, mm. A former U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr was on CNN last night, and he was asked about whether he thinks Donald Trump will take the stand in this case. I want to play some of that sound for you, Jeff. I don't think this defensive uh, advice of counsel uh, is going to go forward because I think the president would have to get on the stand and subject himself to cross-examination in order to raise that, and he'd also have to waive attorney-client privilege. And, and what would happen if he got on the stand? I think uh, I think it would not look it would not come out very well for him. I think he'd be subject to very skilled cross-examination, and I doubt he remembers all the different versions of events he's given over the last few years. So is this along the lines of what you've been hearing? The expectation is the most we'll hear from him is a not guilty plea? Yeah, I think the former attorney general is being uh, diplomatic in how he answers that question. The fact of the matter is, uh, as many times as the former president, as a private citizen, and then as a president has uh, been in a legal situation where he's gone on the record under oath, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, and frankly, there are a lot of prosecutors who would love to get him on the stand, but it is unlikely that something like that will happen in this case because, you know, just like the traffic situation at four o'clock in Washington, D.C., if you get this former president on the stand, who knows what might happen? And that's not the kind of situation that defense attorneys want to face. I can imagine. Jeff Begase, thank you very much. So after concluding its investigation, the January 6th House Select Committee made several criminal refer referrals, rather, some of which were incorporated into Trump's recent indictment. Last night on America Decides, Major Garrett asked the panel's chief investigative counsel, Timothy Hafey, if the indictment was as broad as the committee thought it would be. Listen to what he said. It reads very much like the select committee report. My guess is there are additional facts beyond the indictment that the special counsel's team 
has developed. There certainly are other criminal charges that could have applied, but I think he has picked the two that most closely fit the facts, obstruction of an official proceeding and conspiracy. Well, Hafey went on to say that there is ample evidence from the former president's own mouth of his intent to lie about the 2020 election loss. Our political show, America Decides, will have team coverage of the arraignment of former President Trump later on today. The CBS News special report starts at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, and America Decides streams at 5 Eastern.